Okay, so um, uh, this is going to be a, a video about how um, we can use some of the derived variables uh, functionality of Ocean Data View. Um, so uh, we've got a couple of uh, quite nice looking plots here showing sections uh, through uh, a lock, Scotland. Um, and uh, let's just look at this, this bottom one down here. So this is a nice profile of the oxygen concentration. Uh, so we've got an oxygen sensor on our probe, on our, on our CTD, and that's, um, that's giving us values in milliliters per liter. In fact, actually, we'll just, we'll just make that a little bit bigger so we can kind of like see it. So we're not gonna be interested in these top two ones. So I'll just go into uh, window layout. I will uh, uh, delete that window. Delete that window and move resize this window. So let's move it up a little bit and give it a little bit of bigness so you can see it. Okay, and just select enter and select that. So you can see. Um, so there's some there's some craziness going on in here because of the way that the data is being um, uh, uh, gridded. So we'll just uh, to speed things up. Uh, we'll just check to so look at uh, display R. So it's using this. DIVA gridding, DIVA gridding, so that can um, sometimes cause craziness uh, and is quite slow. So just for this uh, purposes of uh, speeding things up here, I'll just uh, make that faster. Um, and you see that's gridded it very poorly, but it, it calculates it quite quickly. Um, so I don't like that. So I'll just actually just change the way that it's automatic. So you can see that it's doing it's overly smoothing vertically. So uh, I will reduce the Y scale length, it's not smoothing out uh, horizontally enough. So I'll increase the X one. Hopefully that'll give us something um, quite uh, properties again, more bigness. Okay, so anyway, so that you can see just, just for the purposes of, 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 we can see what's going on now with the, the data. So one thing we might wanna do is, uh, rather than just look at the oxygen concentration, if we go and look through the derived variables, there's, there's quite a useful um, uh, derived variable called oxygen saturation, which is the, I guess, the proportion of oxygen that there is in the water compared to be as there would if the water of that temperature is in equilibrium with the atmosphere. So I can tell us here that oxygen is being taken away or being produced within the water column. So uh, if we just go up to uh, view uh, derived variables, if you go down to, to gases here, you can see oxygen saturation is, uh, is one of those. We can add that in. Um, so you see here that it's asking for the oxygen concentration in micromoles per kilogram. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have that. Okay. It also might ask for uh, the temperature and the salinity if those aren't already de defined. Uh, but because I've already used um, defined potential temperature as a derived variable here, I've had to, it already knows what in situ temperature and in situ salinity. I guess salinity is not really in this area. Anyway, it's already defined temperature and salinity. So we need to convert the units of um, uh, from uh, milliliters per liter into micromoles per kilogram. So how do we do that? Um, so we're going to use. Uh, we just couldn't do it. Uh, we're going to use another. Um, function of the derived variables. Uh, so if we select expressions, derivatives, and integrals here, we can write uh, an expression, we can do some maths to create a new variable that will give us um, the, uh, the correct units for oxygen. So uh, select the expression here, and we're going to add a new expression. So we're going to give it a name. So we're going to say it's going to be oxygen constant. I would just call it oxygen, just call it oxygen. And the units are going to be in the units micromole per kilogram, okay? And if we look at what our, uh, our data over here, look at the oxygen concentration, that's in giving us to three significant figures there. So uh, three decimal places will probably be, or three digits in our numbers will probably be sufficient. We'll just give it another one just to be sure. And then... The data that we're going to need for this calculation, we're going to need, um, obviously, we're going to need to do some operation on the oxygen concentration. 
And you'll note that we're also converting it from, from milliliters into micromoles, but also from uh, liters or per liter into per kilogram. So we'll need some uh, uh, estimate of the uh, density. So uh, we've got, uh, I guess, the density of the water here, the sigma t. So we might need to do something with that. So we're going to need to write some kind of expression in here uh, to, to, um, to basically do maths on these variables. Now, the way that uh, Ocean Data View does maths uh, requires uh, this thing called postfix notation. Uh, and I'll just uh, 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 go through uh, one of the tools that Ocean Data View has to, um, to help you convert what you would normally think how maths work with how Ocean Data View or well, most computers uh, deal with uh, maths. Uh, but before we do that, we'll just uh, have a quick look about how to figure out what this calculation actually is. So um, I went to the internet here uh, and basically I, I Googled convert, uh, I guess, convert oxygen to micromoles per kilogram there. Uh, and I found this website here, the ICESCIEM, whatever whatever that is, but um, looks fairly legit. Um, and down at the bottom here, you can see if we've got uh, milliliters per liter, uh, to convert that one milliliter per liter of oxygen is 44.661 micromoles uh, per liter. So we just need to times our value by that. Uh, but we also need to think about converting it into um, uh, uh, kilograms. So we need to know the density of the water as well. So uh, if we go back to Ocean Data View and just cancel, well, could not. I told you, Ooh, get rid of that. Uh, okay. Uh, if we go up to Tools here, uh, there's this uh, in fix to post fix converter. So in the top, we can write some some mathematical expression of how we think math should work. So using the the bod mass order of operations, all that kind of thing, how math should work. So if I take the uh, O2 O2 concentration in uh, milliliters per liter. I won't put the divide in. Um, there's a, just a variable name, um, just so I can keep track of what's what. Uh, I'm gonna need to times that by, uh, what was it? 44.661, what's that? Is that the, I'll just go back to the internet. 44.661, look at me, I can remember stuff. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm going to times those numbers together, and then what I want to do is then divide by the density. Okay, so I'm going to divide by the density, but the density we have as a density anomaly, so that's going to be, uh, you can see here, the density anomaly is uh, basically the, the, the density of the water in kilograms per meter cubed minus a thousand, uh, because uh, the small differences from uh, uh, the overall density. So uh, I'm just going to kind of redo that math. So it's going to be uh, the density of the water is going to be the sigma t. Uh, and that's going to be, we're then going to add to that uh, 1,000. Uh, we'll put that in brackets. And then we're going to divide that by 1,000. Uh, to get the, uh, the density of water in uh, kilograms per litre. Uh, so if we translate that, you can see it's 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 basically changed into this this weird postfix notation, which basically is take this variable here and this number, times them together. Uh, then take this variable and this variable, add them together. Then take that variable that you have in memory, uh, add that to uh, 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 and a thousand, and then divide them, and then whatever you've got from all of that calculation, divide that by what was from this one. So it's a bit hard to get your head around. It might be one of, worth playing around with some simpler calculations to see how this thing works, but the, the converter in ODV works quite well. So I'm just going to copy that. So there's a thing that allows us to copy to the clipboard here as well. Uh, so we can then go back now to our, um, our um, derived variable and try and calculate this new um, methingamy. So if we go again to uh, expressions, expressions, we're going to add one. It's lost all that stuff we put in before, so oxygen, and the units are going to be a micromole 
uh, kilogram. Give us some more units. We're going to need the oxygen concentration in milliliters per liter and the density anomaly. Okay, so I can then paste in here, uh, control V, paste in my equation from uh, the uh, ODV postfix converter. And now, basically, I want to replace the, the variables that I've, I've just put in here for placeholders. So delete all of that. And I will replace that with the variable that's been kind of defined up here from the, from the input variable. So that's hash one. And this variable here will be hash two. OK, so hopefully this will now uh, create us a variable. That, uh, that is in the right units. If I click OK and then OK, you can see now a new variable has, has appeared, the derived variable oxygen in micromoles per kilo. Those numbers look uh, sensible. You can just check uh, with a calculator uh, by taking kind of the numbers of that data point here um, and uh, here and just plugging them in and seeing if you get this number down here. Um, right, so we can now go again back to view derived variables and uh, I guess I guess before we do that I could I could just uh, change this variable up here to the one that I want just to see if it's got the same pattern it hasn't gone created me crazy data if I just change the Z variable so I just clicked Z while hovering over the um, plot okay it gives very similar okay just change the scale for the units which is pretty nice. Um, so I could now go to derived variables and go to the gases tab down here and select oxygen saturation. Add that. It wants to know what the oxygen in micromoles per kilogram is. Uh, so I'll use the variable I've just derived and click OK. And again, it's given us this lovely new thing of me down here, variable in our list of variables. And then I'll just change the Z variable for this plot. So I can go to Z. Um, and now I could oxygen saturation. Okay, so this is uh, just a, a slightly different way of, of, of showing um, the oxygen saturation. It's quite nice that we can now see that there are definitely regions uh, where there's less than 100% oxygen saturation. So oxygen is being kind of used up in this plot, which is quite nice. Um, and we've got oxygen being produced up here, which is also. Um, so one of the things we could do is um, uh, maybe, uh, well, basically, this is, uh, this is quite, I guess, a good point to stop thinking about the derived variables and maybe think a little bit more about how we show these um, uh, variability within the water column. So it appears there's quite a lot going on up here, uh, not so much going on down here maybe maybe the variability is less. we might want to have two plots that show uh, these uh, the variables so we might want to add a shallow profile and a deep profile so let's just let's just do that if we add um, our go to our window prop uh, sorry our window layout we're going to create a new window from that one and then move and resize that here. Okay, uh, you can see it's slightly messing up here with these um, uh, labels and whatnot. So I can just go in and just go to properties of that window, go to G data, sorry, X axis settings, and then say no access for that window. See, and it's got rid of that, which is pretty nice, makes it a bit clearer. Now we want to basically change the scale of this. So the top bottom one might be for the whole water column. And the, the, um, the top one is just focusing in on the, on the surface. So you can just go through the, uh, let's change the Y variable. Oh, no, cancel the, uh, sorry, set the range. So right click on the plot, set the range, and just take that to maybe the top 15 meters of the water column. Oh, and that's really annoying because it's changed all of these plots, which is a bit tedious. So uh, to get the, the windows to independently change a variable, uh, or, or the scale when that scale appears on other plots. What you have to do is, uh, well, we'll just we'll just go back and set that to uh, 
Okay, we'll just go back and 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 we just want to change one of these y axes. So there are some options in ODV which which are a little bit hidden. Uh, but if we go to View uh, Settings. Um, and then you get all these things we can change. Uh, see, I've been messing around with the font here. So I've got Comic Sans, which is kind of unforgivable. So I don't know what California and FB is. We change that. So look, that changes it to slightly less hideous text. Um, but also, if we go to View Settings, there are a whole bunch of other things on here. And one of them is in Axis Synchronization. So this is the thing that's causing all of the axes to change when we change one of them. So if we just unclick that, click OK. And then when we go to set the range here, hopefully it has only changed this, this one thing up here. OK, which is quite nice. So we now see that there's uh, this nice kind of subsurface maxima in oxygen saturation, which is nice, I guess. Um, and then uh, oxygen utilization at depth, but only in one of the basins. We can see that detail, but then this kind of plot is much better for seeing that the whole water column kind of picture. And if we were wanting to think about the scales of this as well, so we might want to think about how uh, these things, um, uh, if, there's, if there's lots of variability in here and not so much variability down here, you might want to think about having different scales for the, for the two axes. We can now do that now we've changed our, our axis synchronization. Okay, so stop there for now. So really, the take home uh, for, for this is to, to, to it's basically to show you how you can use the derived variables to, to create basically new variables from the data you have, but also how you can change the units using the derived variable function uh, so that you can kind of like maybe I mean, if you wanted to change between degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit, uh, all you need to know is the maths for that, uh, put it in this uh, converter uh, to, to, to allow you to work out how to use the derived variable function. Uh, okay, so we'll stop there.